14th, 14th, 17th, 19th, 12th, 8th, 11th, 17th, 18th, 24th, 20th, 15th, 10th, 10th, and fourth. These are the championship league positions of Bristol City in the last near two decades. Since the beginning of the millennium of 2000, 24 years in the making, Bristol City has experienced two promotions and one relegation. And the last time they came close to the Premier League was back in 2008 due to a Dean Windass goal in the playoff final against Hull City. The best way to describe Bristol City is without even looking at the league table, you can almost guarantee they are either 11th or 16th for all times. This has been an accurate description of Bristol City for the last nine years. No real hope of promotion, but at the same time, no real risk of relegation. To really showcase how fast football can really be, since Bristol City has been back in the championship from 2015-16, Leicester City have won the Premier League, also won an FA Cup, made it to the quarterfinals of the Champions League, the semi-finals of the UEFA Conference League, and got relegated at the same time, and is very likely to win a championship. All this happened in the same period that Bristol City stayed 11th or 16th for the last nine years. Tell me down below your thoughts on Bristol City. Do you think they are the most boring club in England and potentially a sleeping giant for not just them but the region, the city of Bristol in general. And of course, for the best football prints you can get, all made by myself, Mazzola Designs, down below. Use code Bristol for 15% off all items. Like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And let's go. Football is about being excited, is about having hope of seeing your team progress. And even if you get relegated, the kind of experience of the next year to maybe also bouncing back up is exciting for many clubs. The best example of this is a team like Rotherham United, which no matter what time in the last decade, you can always say that they are either in the top four of League One or the bottom four of the championship. And most of the time, you are always correct. But at least when it comes to Rotherham, they've always got some excitement. They've always got something going on. And even if they are having quite a poor season in the championship, which they are this year, they always have hope of going down and then bouncing straight back up again because they seem to have a good formula of how to get back up. Bristol City don't even have that. They don't really have even any sort of real risk of getting relegated most of the time. And any hope of even making the playoffs is again, very minimal at times. Even though it is true that in the championship, you can always be a run of games away from being in the playoffs at any point of the season, it feels. If you can win three, four games on a bounce, win four out of the next six games, you probably are in a shout for the playoffs. However, this always becomes an issue with Bristol City. And they are not the only ones by any means. Preston North End is another team which kind of gets joked around for being in the same positions every single season. These have been their league positions in the last, again, near decade from 15-16, and they have only ever been between 7th and 14th for eight years. And this year, they are currently 8th and have some hope of being in the playoffs, but you can never trust them, and likely they may finish 11th or 10th again. I spoke to a few Bristol City fans of what it is like to support a club with really nothing going on, because even if you're doing poorly, you can always have hope for the next year to win some more games and to have some excitement. Even when you have a really bad season, you can kind of laugh about it a bit. Maybe even have some hope of even getting out of relegation. But when you are always in the mid-pack, you never really have any excitement at all. And you always end up in March, not really having anything to look forward to. This is why I call Bristol City one of the most boring clubs in England. They're not the only ones, there's more teams just like them. Currently in the English Football Pyramid, the team that spent the longest time in one division is indeed Birmingham City with 13 years in the championship in a row. Behind them is Mansfield Town. So you may say, well, then clearly Birmingham are the most boring club, but no, not for me because even though they were always in a championship, they were always in a relegation scrap and they always had something on the line for the last 
couple of months of the season and also had derbies around them too. If it was not just a Villa when they dropped down, but West Brom or Wolves, there was always something going on around Birmingham City each year. There was always something crazy. This wasn't the worst of it all. Only prior to a season ago, Rochdale was actually the team that had the best data of this. Rochdale now currently playing in the National League from 1975 to 2011 was in League 2 for about 37 years. Of course, this is forgetting a team such as Everton and Arsenal that has been in the Premier League since its inception. There's also one issue too. Derbies. Well, the Bristol Derby is a quite popular derby in England, always kind of well known to be a derby that always causes some trouble. Main issue is Bristol City and Bristol Rovers rarely ever collide and only really has any hope of colliding in the Cups. And you can see this on Wikipedia how boring this really looks because ever since 2002, 22 years ago, there has only ever been three Three Bristol derbies. The last one in 2013 and the other time was in the Football League Trophy semi-finals in 2007. The last time that these two clubs both played in the same league was 2000 and 2001. This is a problem because even if you aren't doing that well, the derbies you can look forward to, but they don't even have that. The closest they really have is a seven-side derby, which is Cardiff City beat Bristol City. Issue is, even for both clubs, it's not even their biggest derby. Of course, Cardiff is with Swansea and City is with Rovers. So even for both clubs, they can get up for it, but they still don't care about it in the same way. So why are they never getting relegated and why are they always never in the playoffs? What is the issue here? Is it money? Well, money-wise, they always seem to have a good chunk of talent coming through. Each season, they always do seem to bring in some players that can get you a bit excited, thinking maybe they can do something here. This year, for example, is when you felt like things could change. They sold one of their best young talents from the academy called Alex Scott for 23 million euro, and they brought in quite a good variety of players, spending 7 million altogether, which is actually quite a lot for the championship. A good amount of players they brought in, and in previous years, only really relied on free transfers, as in a championship, that is how most teams operate. Other than a certain season, which was a big year for them, 1920. Not only did they sell one, two, but three players for over 10 million euro. That being Adam Webster for 22 million to Bratton Hove Albion, Lloyd Kelly to Bournemouth for 14 million, and Josh Brownhill to Burnley for 10 million. They got rid of three of some pretty good young players, and he brought in a lot of players with that 32 million euro, which is a lot and I mean a lot to spend in the championship. And the likes of Thomas Callas, Masengo from Monaco, Naki Wells from Burnley, Casey Palmer, De Silva, Sammy Schmodek, Spenica Forby on lawn. It was a proper decent looking team. But even with all this money, they still finished 12th place. Even a year prior to that, they still spent some good money, selling 29 million euro worth of players and bringing in, and bringing in 10 million euro worth of players. And this led to their best finish in the championship for quite a long time. That being an 8th place finish, only issue is the quality in the league in this season was very, very high. This was the year when you had the incredible playoffs of Leeds, West Brom, Aston Villa and Derby County. Not only Bristol City, but Bristol in general for me is a somewhat sleeping giant when it comes to a city which is incredibly passionate about football and has got a good derby to go with it. The city of Bristol has never had a European football fixture never had a Premier League fixture and despite their population being the seventh largest city in England, some people can say that both clubs can be seen as almost sleeping giants that never woke up. Attendance figures for Bristol City have always been more than respectable, usually around the 20,000 mark. With a fantastic academy of Alex Scott, Lloyd Kelly, Antoine Semenyo, Bobby decadova Reed, Joel Bryan, just to name a few, that has all sold for millions of pounds just from Bristol City's academy alone. When it comes to looking on the map, Bristol is the largest city in that part of the country in the southwest. They stand out and have a massive catchment area where if they were able to take advantage of that region, they could have massive influence over it and therefore it opens up the doors to a much more wider talent pool. Is Bristol a footballing city? Well, depends on who you're asking the city. Potentially, for some, it could be seen as even a rugby city. Tell me down about your thoughts, but I do feel like 
not just Bristol City, but even Rovers, the city in general has large potential. And when it comes to the last couple of years, over two decades, and only what two promotions and one relegation, it's really poor and it leads to boredom. And the issue is with the young people coming through in the area, they would rather go support a team in the Premier League rather than their local if they see it as boring. And sadly, that sounds awful, but that happens. And it happens a lot more often than you really should think. And with City, the issue is that they've had the chances. They've sold some young players for really high amounts of money, which they should have took advantage of. And unfortunately, didn't have the right players, the right people at the time period to take advantage. And maybe one day they will. Tell me your thoughts down below and I'll see you next time for another video. Peace.